Rahim. I'm going to discuss the topic of asthma in pregnancy with you. This is in fact the talk article which was published in 8 September 2012. The first very important thing which is written in this guideline is how common is asthma in pregnancy. About this it's written that asthma is common condition that affects approximately 10% of the pregnant woman. And asthma in pregnancy worsens control in one third of the women, improves it in one third and has no effect in one third. Now, how many people worldwide are affected by the asthma? Asthma affects an estimated 235 million people worldwide and the burden is likely to rise substantially in the next few decades. The condition causes about 2,39,000 deaths per year means 0.4% of all deaths are due to this disease and it results in large burden of disability. The total cost of asthma in Europe is estimated to be about 17.7 .7 billion per annum. Now coming to the main point, what are the features of asthma? As all of you know, asthma can cause wheezing, cough, especially in the night time, chest pain, shortness of breath, and difficult breathing. So what is written in the talk article? It's written that asthma is a chronic inflammatory disease of the airway, which is characterized by intermittent episode of wheeze, shortness of breath, chest tightness, and cough, which are often worse at night. These are the same thing which I have explained in the uh, figures. Now, it is a variable disease where inflammation and structural changes can occur in the airway in response to certain stimuli or triggers. And what causes the symptoms which have been described? In fact, the in, uh, inflammation and structural changes, this causes airway hyper-responsiveness and variable airflow obstruction leading to the symptoms which have been described. And along with the common symptoms, patients suffer from flare-ups or exacerbation of their disease either in response to an acute infection which is usually viral in origin or due to poor control of the airway inflammation. Now coming to the prevalence of the asthma, the prevalence of asthma in pregnant women is 4 to 12 percent, making it the most common chronic condition in pregnancy. Now what are the triggers for asthma? The box one of this article describes some triggers and those include first of all allergens. What are allergens? Allergens are such as house dust, mite, pollens, etc. Second allergen is smoking, exercise, occupational exposure, pollution, drugs such as aspirin and beta blockers, food and drinks such as dairy products, alcohol, peanuts, orange juice, additives such as monosodium, sodium glutamate and thorazine, medical conditions such as rhinitis and gastric reflux, hormonal conditions such as premenstrual condition and pregnancy. Now something about breathlessness at pregnancy. It's written that breathlessness is a sensation of feeling out of breath or unable to catch your breath. A healthy respiratory rate is 12 to 20 breaths per minute at rest. A persistent respiratory rate at rest of more than 24 breaths per minute is abnormal. Now breathlessness in pregnancy is extremely common and there are different causes. It may reflect either the normal anatomical and physiological changes that occur in pregnancy or anxiety or maybe a consequence of underlying pathology. Therefore, in a woman with a known asthma, the cause of increased breathlessness may not be due to asthma. Similarly, in women not diagnosed as asthmatic, new is incident asthma can be the cause of breathlessness, although rarely. And there are different causes of breathlessness to be considered in pregnancy, and these are shown in box 2. So this is box 2, which show main differential diagnosis in, as in pregnant women with dyspnea. First is anxiety, then hyperventilation, then dysfunctional breathing, respiratory diseases, cardiac diseases, endocrine diseases, hematological conditions, and renal disease. Respiratory diseases include asthma, chest infection or pneumonia, thromboembolic diseases, interstitial lung diseases, or sarcoid as secondary to connective tissue disorder, pneumothorax, amniotic fluid embolism. 
and the different cardiac diseases included arrhythmia, ischemic heart disease, cardiomyopathy. The endocrine disease may include diabetes mellitus leading to hyperventilation in the setting of acute ketoacidosis or acute thyrotoxicol. Hematological conditions include chronic anemia and acute hemorrhage. Renal diseases include hyperventilation to compensate for metabolic acidosis secondary to acute renal failure. Now, what are the effects of pregnancy on asthma? Well, the severity of the asthma during pregnancy remains unchanged, worsens or improves in equal proportion. Well, in severe diseases, asthma control is more likely to de deteriorate in 60% than in the mild diseases, which is 10%. At what gestation age there is exacerbation? Exacerbation are most common between 24 and 36 weeks of pregnancy. Respiratory viral infections were the most frequent triggers of exacerbation, 34%, followed by poor adherence to inhaled corticosteroid therapy, 29%. Therefore, during pregnancy, women with asthma needs to be closely reviewed throughout the pregnancy, irrespective of disease severity. Now, coming to the effects of asthma on pregnancy. Now, asthma is in pregnancy is associated with certain complications. So, first question is, is asthma associated with hypertension? About this, it's written that, um, that there are uh, limited data on how asthma control prior to pregnancy influences pregnancy outcome. Although, in one case, control study of 2000 women, poor asthma control and disease severity prior to asthma were associated with an elevated risk of hypertension. And second question is asthma associated with preeclampsia? In one systemic review included, including 1,000 women, found that asthma as exacerbations were not associated with an increased risk of preeclampsia. Now, how are the rates of the cesarean section affected in asthma? Now, there are different studies done which demonstrated that women with asthma have a higher frequency of cesarean section than in women without asthma. In some studies, intrauterine growth restriction and low birth weight were observed but large prospective studies are still needed to be done. Low birth weight is associated with the measures of poor asthma control such as persistent daily symptoms or poor lung function and in the women not using inhaled corticosteroid. Now, what are the physiological factors affecting asthma in pregnancy? First of all, increase in free corticosteroid level may protect against inflammatory stress. Increase in bronchodilating substances such as progesterone may improve airway responsibility. Increase in bronchoconstricting substances such as prostaglandin H2-alpha may promote airway constriction. Placental 11-beta-hydroxysteroid dehydrogenase type 2 decreased activity is associated with an increase in placental corticosteroid concentration and low birth weight. Placental gene expression of inflammatory cytokines may promote low birth weight. Modification of cell-mediated immunity may influence maternal response to infection and inflammation. Now, this treatment ladder is very much important. Coming to the step one, in which we have mild intermittent asthma, in which we use inhale short-acting beta-2 agonist. If that doesn't work, move to step two, in which we add inhale steroid 200 to 800 microgram per day. If that doesn't work, move to step three, in which we add inhale long-acting beta-2 agonist. Along with that, we assess the control of this. If good response to long-acting beta-2 uh, beta agonist, beta-2 agonist, then continue with long-acting beta-2 agonist. But if uh, control still remains inadequate or if no response to long-acting beta-2 agonist, then what we do? We move to 800 micrograms steroid. If there is benefit from long-acting beta-2 uh, agonist but uh, control still remains inadequate, then continue with long-acting beta-2 agonist and increase inhale corticosteroid dose to 800 micrograms per day. If no response to long-acting beta-2 agonist, stop long-acting uh, beta-2 agonist and increase inhale corticosteroid to 800 microgram per day. Then, step four, consider trial of increasing inhale steroid up to 2,000 microgram per day. And addition of fourth drug, for example, leukotriene receptor antagonist, theophyrine or beta-2 agonist step. If that doesn't work, then come to step five. 
in which we use daily steroid tablet in the lowest dose providing adequate control and maintain high dose inhaled steroid at 2000 microgram per day and consider other treatments to minimize the use of steroid tablets now what are the pregnancy issues in asthma poor asthma control can affect both mother and fetus and asthmatic mothers are more um, at risk of having low birth weight new dates and preterm delivery and complications such as preeclampsia especially in the absence of actively managed asthma now what is the importance of smoking cessation smoking cessation is an important part of general obstetric advice but is important in asthma to reduce symptoms and the efficacy of inhaled corticosteroids and is reduced in asthmatic who smoke is to reduce symptoms and efficacy of inhaled corticosteroid is reduced in asthmatic who smoke okay now coming to the non pharmacological management first of all education is the cornerstone of asthma management and need to include understanding of the condition and its management trigger avoidance asthma control adequate use of uh, devices and and importance of adherence to medication together with the construction of the personal action plan now what are the pharmacological treatments and why is it important to have asthma control it should be emphasized that it is safer for women to use asthma therapy in the pregnancy to achieve and maintain good control than to have uncontrolled asthma and studies show that inhaled corticosteroids short or long acting beta 2 agonist and theophylline do not increase the risk of maternal or neonatal outcomes such as preeclampsia fetal congenital malformations low birth weight or preterm delivery therefore good asthma control remains the aim throughout pregnancy now what studies have been done on the safety of anti asthmatic drugs studies showed that short acting beta 2 agonist is safe in pregnancy sonitrol and formitrol uh, cause no formation no malformation when studies were done on them and the safety of long acting beta 2 agonist has been questioned theophylline has been found to be safe in pregnancy and there is less than 0.3% risk of cleft lip and cleft palate in the first trimester what are peripartum issues acute severe or um, life threatening exacerbation of asthma are very rare in pregnancy women who have been on drugular or steroids may require hydrocortisone during labor and ergometrine sintomatrine and prostaglandin may cause bronchoconstriction and should be used with caution now coming to the last few points asthma postpartum and breastfeeding now is asthma exacerbated in the postpartum period in postpartum period there is not an increased risk of asthma exacerbation now are asthma medications safe in the postpartum period in general the same medications deemed safe in pregnancy can be continued and those with a negative or an uncertain safety profile should be avoided and seeds for analgesia are to some degree contraindicated in asthma and may cause bronchospasm but in a woman without intolerance to NSAIDs they can be used what is advice about breastfeeding who recommends that women should exclusively breastfeed for at least 6 months okay so these were some important points from talk guideline about asthma in pregnancy thank you so much